Hello, uh, my name is uh, Milan Ketzman. Uh, I'm here at the Summit Art Space, and I'm the artist here that uh, did the Head to Head series that is currently on exhibit at the Welcome Gallery. And uh, I would like to just briefly talk about my one particular piece here. I call this the Suffragettes. Uh, we have Susan B. Anthony and Louisa May Alcott. Uh, they both worked pretty much a lot towards women's rights. Uh, in addition to uh, Susan B. Anthony, she was also involved in the temperance movement, uh, women's right to vote, uh, and equal rights for pretty much mankind, humanity. And uh, Louisa May Alcott uh, was the author uh, of Little Women, which also tried to uh, promote women's rights quite a bit. And uh, and that there were other women that I could have paired up the two with. Uh, but I just kind of picked this, but uh, Susan B. Anthony uh, had other women in the movement that worked with her, maybe even more so than uh, Louisa May Alcott. But um, they were just two big figures that I wanted to portray in this particular piece. Uh, Louisa May Alcott uh, had health issues, I guess, and wasn't able to really physically participate from what I understand as much in the movement, but she did, through her writing, uh, do a lot. Uh, Susan B. Anthony lived a little bit longer than, than, than uh, Louisa May Alcott and was very active in a lot of different areas. Most of the reference that I get is black and white photographs, the old black and white photographs uh, when I've done my research, but I did not want to do the paintings in black and white, so I would pick out a tone or a color scheme that I would kind of just had, it was a gut feeling that I had that I wanted to portray uh, the particular individuals. Uh, the, the colors I chose, the uh, lavenders and the kind of little purplish, uh, to me they had a little more of a feminine uh, uh, approach to it, a little more of a feel. And I think for that reason, that's kind of why I picked those colors. If you guys out there in the general viewing public get a chance, come down and and see my series here. Uh, this is just one of uh, several paintings that I have. Once again, it's the head-to-head -head series, uh, historical figures, portraits, at the Summit Art Space here in uh, Akron. Hi, I'm Leah Neff Hepner, the President and CEO of the Summit County Historical Society of Akron, Ohio, and I'm happy to be here today with you to talk about the head-to-head -head and the paintings that we see here. We have Susan B. Anthony and Louisa May Alcott, and while these ladies did not live here in Akron, I want to connect their history to you. Because while Susan B. Anthony was fighting for the rights of women in 1848 at the Seneca Falls Convention, did you know that the concept of voting rights for women was not going to be presented at that event unless Frederick Douglass pushed for it? And talking about Frederick Douglass, did you know that the most famous um, daguerreotype of him was actually taken here in Akron? And then let's tie that in even further, is that one of Frederick Douglass' common companions on the um, circuit for slavery um, and the abolishment of it was one Sojourner Truth, who in 1851 actually gave an infamous speech here in Akron. You know the title of it as Ain't I a Woman, but as a historian, I must let you know that those words never came out of her mouth when she gave that presentation here in 1851. And then we have Louisa May Alcott, sweet Louisa May Alcott. And how is she connected to Akron? Well, her family was very well and very well informed about the abolitionist movement. And one of the people that they adored was John Brown. We'll be talking about John Brown on another clip. But in the moment, I'd love to read to you a poem that Louisa May Alcott wrote upon the death of the abolitionist. The title of it is called With a Rose That Bloomed on the Day of John Brown's Martyrdom. In the long silence of the night, nature's benignant power woke aspirations for the light within the folded flower. Its presence and the gracious day made summer in the room, but women's eyes shed tender dew on the little rose in bloom. Then blossomed forth a grander flower in the wilderness of wrong, Untouched by slavery's bitter frost, a soul devout and strong. God watched that century plant up rose, far shining through the gloom, fill a nation with the breath of a noble life in bloom. A life so powerful in its truth, 
a nature so complete, it conquered ruler, judge, and priest, and held them at its feet. Death seemed proud to take a soul so beautifully given, and the gallows only proved to him a stepping stone to heaven. Each cheerful word, each valiant act, so simple, so sublime, spoke to us through the reverent hush which sanctified that time. That moment when the brave old man went so serenely forth, with footsteps whose unfaltering tread re-echoed through the north. The sword he wielded for the right turns to a victor's palm. His memory stands forevermore, a spirit-stirring psalm. No breath of shame can touch his shield, nor ages dim its shine. Living, he made life beautiful. Dying, he made death divine. No moment of quarried stone, no eloquence of speech, can grave the lessons on the land his martyrdom will teach. No eulogy like his own words with hero spirit rife. I truly serve the cause I love by, yield, by yielding up my life.